and good afternoon and welcome to this uh, conversation. Uh, it is about uh, uh, the evolution of Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi, it's a, a mature technology that has been incredibly successful. And we have had Wi-Fi for a long time, and yet it, it continues to, be, uh, to, to evolve, uh, to add new functionalities, to improve performance. And uh, today we're gonna talk about uh, this process, the, how Wi-Fi, it's, uh, it's getting even better. And uh, to talk about also how does uh, the, the evolution of Wi-Fi, how does it fit with uh, uh, the, evolu the, the, the rollout uh, of uh, uh, 5G. And uh, today I'm talking to Carlos Cordero. He is uh, a senior principal engineer and uh, a senior director um, for uh, Wi-Fi standards at Intel. Uh, Carlos, welcome. Thank, uh, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here to be talking about this exciting technology. Yes, it is truly an exciting technology, and uh, especially if you think of how long it, it, you know it has been around uh, and uh, how many things we we do with with Wi-Fi. Um, so to, to get started, can you tell us what is that you do uh, at Intel uh, with respect to Wi-Fi? Yeah, I'll be happy to. Uh, so I I work at Intel in a group called the Next Generation and Standards. And among other things, uh, the and we call it NGS for short, uh, it's responsible for all the wireless uh, standardization uh, at Intel. And specifically, you know, my responsibility there is to work with uh, within the Wi-Fi standards and our team essentially participates in, in every other organization that has to do with driving the Wi-Fi technology forward. And that includes uh, the IEEE 802.11, where we define the lower layers, the medium access control and physical layers, but also uh, the Wi-Fi Alliance, which, which is really responsible for bringing those technologies to market in a uh, interoperable, uh, interoperable fashion and defining many of the upper layer protocols that uh, we have come to know and love um, and that are slowly coming, coming to market, such as Passpoint, uh, which I'm sure we're gonna be talking a little bit uh, later today, uh, and also strong security. Uh, and finally, the Wireless Broadband Alliance, which does a lot of the end-to-end -end, uh, trials for carriers, really focused on making sure that uh, Wi-Fi is suited for the, for the managed uh, carrier users. Now, let me ask you a question about Intel. Intel has been, you know, working with, with Wi-Fi since before the Wi-Fi lines even existed. So uh, before the, the term Wi-Fi um, was, was introduced. Um, and so you had a major role in promoting the technology. What do you see the role of Intel right now with, the, with you know, the latest step in, in the evolution of Wi-Fi, especially as, as it relates to 5G? And, and this is a great question. Um, you know, Wi-Fi has been around for uh, over 20 years now. I mean, you know, the, uh, the standard has been around for a long time and then products start showing up in the market. And I, I think it's important to realize that in large part, Wi-Fi is what it is today, so popular because of what Intel did as part of the Centrino launch about 15 years ago, uh, where Intel decided at that point to have really a strategic move to put Wi-Fi in every platform that it was shaping in laptops. And that really transformed uh, the user's Wi-Fi and made it so pervasive as, uh, as it is today. Just to give you an idea, um, we have about 8 billion Wi-Fi devices in use today around the world. So it's have more Wi-Fi devices than we have people. Um, and also, uh, just last year, about 3 billion Wi-Fi chipsets have been sold in the market. Uh, Intel is and has been for a long time, since the Centrino days and still today, a very strong proponent, a very strong advocate of Wi-Fi. And we have a lot of stuff in the pipeline around the 11AUX, 11AD, 11AY. That's really going to be pushing the boundaries of Wi-Fi going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And, and now I remember that when Centrino, the, the whole announcements were made, everybody was kind of skeptical in, in terms of, do you really need Wi-Fi or how it's going to add a huge cost to the, to, you know, to the cost of a laptop or whatever device you have? And uh, today, we have actually the opposite problem because your laptop will come for sure with Wi-Fi, but you might not have Ethernet. And if you think about it back then, it would have been you know, heresy to, to, to say that you'd have a laptop with no Ethernet. 
So things would really have evolved. But the other thing is that we often think of Wi-Fi as a sort of cheap technology, sort of like it's, it's inexpensive to have Wi-Fi at home or, you know, it, we look at it from the user point of view, it's a low cost of adoption. Uh, but at the same time, it's really important because it adds value to the economy. And, and so it's, you know, the, because of the, the, the low cost, the easiness with which you can deploy it and the, its ubiquitous presence, uh, there is a, a, a huge economic benefit to society. What, what's your view on that? Right. And, you know, I think you are touching on a very important point. Uh, Wi-Fi is uh, a technology that for a few dollars, you can have a gigabit link uh, in, in your home. So it, it does, it is a very low cost technology, which is really what has made it so popular, uh, where we have Wi-Fi today uh, pretty much in uh, every enterprise, in many homes, uh, in a coffee shops, airport lounges, you name it. Uh, there was a recent study from Wi-Fi Forward, and I have to here, you know, give a shout out to them, that uh, in that study, they have shown that Wi-Fi has uh, generated uh, over $550 billion of, uh, to the U.S. economy uh, last year. Uh, that's an unprecedented number. Uh, if you look at it globally, that number will uh, easily exceed $2 trillion. So the value of Wi-Fi, it's not only that we have come to know and love it, but also there is a huge value generated to the economy, which, which makes this uh, technology uh, so much more important. Absolutely. So uh, let's let's look at uh, you know, the evolution of uh, you know what, what's what's next uh, in terms of uh, Wi-Fi. What do you see to be the main? Uh, you, you mentioned some of them, but um, what do you see the major um, uh, steps moving forward? You know, we are working on many different aspects of Wi-Fi, from the lower layers, uh, trying to uh, increase uh, the data rates and provide a rich user experience to the very high layers where it's more about uh, manageability, touching the, uh, uh, um, addressing new use cases, new markets. So just to give you some ideas, um, the major new thing that is coming to the market uh, soon is around the next evolution of Wi-Fi around 11AX. So I think we all know uh, 11N, 11AC, technologies that uh, you can get them today if you go to a Best Buy, if you go to any retail shop, uh, now we are working on 11AX, which is the next evolution of Wi-Fi. That's going to provide a much higher data rates compared to 11AC, the previous generation. It's going to include new technologies that uh, are going to make it uh, Wi-Fi even more um, uh, useful for dense environments where you have a number of devices in the home today, for example. You not only have your your cell phones, your laptops, but now you also have IoT devices. You have your cameras, you have your thermostats. And that density of devices requires that the technology to evolve. And that's what really the value proposition for 11AX, providing that additional capacity, that additional uh, density, that is something that is a major differentiator compared to, uh, to the previous technology. Not only that, 11X is going to also be providing uh, better power efficiency. So that allows you to have those IoT devices that are very low power to be able to sleep for long periods of time and, and save power. Uh, and this is all being done on top of the existing generation of 11AC. So that's really going to be a major revolution uh, in the Wi-Fi market, the major new uh, step in the evolution of Wi-Fi. Yeah. At the same time, uh, we have the higher frequency bands. Uh, we have uh, other technologies like 11AY, 11, 11 which is really driving the speeds in the six gigahertz frequency bands to address uh, use cases for AR, VR, uh, which is really something very exciting that uh, is happening today, but also provide many other usages around wireless docking, high, uh, high speed network. So these are just some of the usages. Um, and we've always improved security. Uh, where we have now the new version of security of coming from Wi-Fi Alliance around WPA3 that offers new and unprecedented security for, for Wi-Fi. Yes, yeah, so a lot of the things you said, you know, is something that you could basically say about 5G as well. Um, so it, it seems like uh, uh, Wi-Fi is 
and it clearly, uh, you know, as Wi-Fi evolves, it's, it tries to meet the, the requirements and 5G is doing the same. So it's not surprising that you're moving in the same direction because what they're trying to do is to meet the same demand out there for pervasive connectivity that we are seeing, you know, um, you know, in the market everywhere in the world. Um, how does it, how do you think that uh, uh, Wi-Fi, the new Wi-Fi, the, the evolution of Wi-Fi compares to uh, the evolution of cellular, so with 5G? It's a great question. And, you know, uh, just uh, uh, talking to many people over the years and be at many events, there's always this discussion around how Wi-Fi fits 5G, the role of Wi-Fi in 5G. The way we see that is Intel, is that Wi-Fi is uh, critical in meeting many of the 5G needs um, and, and use cases. We actually see these two technologies as complementary. Um, Wi-Fi has really a, a huge penetration indoors, um, as I, we mentioned before, enterprises, homes, uh, coffee shops, and, and a long, uh, airport lounges, for example. And, and cellular, of course, is uh, prevalent outdoors, and of course, you can also get covers indoors. But we also see that in many cases where um, the quality of the cellular link falls short indoors, that's really why Wi-Fi picks up the, uh, the tab uh, and, and can really uh, supplement uh, the use case for cellular in offering, um, as we talked about before, 4K video uh, streams or if it's AR or VR or Wi-Fi offloading through the use of uh, technologies like Passpoint. And just to give you an idea, Passpoint is a technology that you know, has been around for a few years, and it's increasingly being deployed by carriers. At MWC uh, this year, uh, Passpoint was broadly deployed uh, in, in the, at the MWC site, and Wi-Fi transferred over 2.3 terabytes of data during MWC. There was a huge uh, number of uh, Wi-Fi devices at MWC. And that's really what Wi-Fi can do for cellular. Even if you have that cellular connectivity, the high capacity of Wi-Fi allows, uh, allows you to complement cellular and then deliver to the user a much better user experience, which we only see growing 5G. Actually, we see that 5G actually is gonna open up even more opportunity for Wi-Fi because of those requirements in terms of capacity, low latency, that really suits uh, the Wi-Fi technology that uh, is being developed today. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, uh, and I think that that's in line because with 5G, uh, you know, the, the, the whole idea behind it is to have different access technologies being integrated together. And so Wi-Fi is going to get even closer to cellular because there's gonna be more of an opportunity for integration, right? Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, in the past, in 4G, there was uh, a lot of technology being developed to look at the integration of Wi-Fi and cellular uh, around uh, the, the shorthand is LWA, which is LTE Wi-Fi uh, uh, aggregation. There was LWIP. There was a lot of work done in the industry uh, to look at the integration. In recent years, we see even more work around integration and the broad topic of convergence between Wi-Fi and cellular. Uh, we believe that 5G offers new opportunities for that integration to happen. There are certain things that the 5G experts, and we have many of those at Intel, that we work really close together that they're looking at, such as uh, the separation between control units and distributed units, that really opens up a new level of uh, opportunities for integration of Wi-Fi into the 5G core. Uh, this, is, this is something that at Intel, we are quite interested uh, in, in, uh, in pursuing. We are doing some, uh, some work in that space. And we believe that uh, 5G is gonna offer that, you know, additional level of uh, integration uh, compared to 4G. And this is something that uh, the industry is working hard and I think users are gonna be able to take advantage of that in, in coming years. Now, um Okay, so, so integration, you know, sounds like a good thing, but in practice, what does it mean for the user? Because right now we still have, you know, Wi-Fi and cellular on our phones and we can, we can still use both of them. We already use both of them. What, what is going to be different when, when you have a deeper integration from a user point of view or use cases that you can support? Right, and, and the integration uh, comes in different flavors. Uh, 
Uh, we can talk about integration at the component level that will simply offer lower cost devices. So you can imagine that some components of Wi-Fi and cell, they can be reused. They can reuse antennas, you can reuse um, uh, FFTs and uh, or encoders or decoders. But you can also think of uh, uh, higher layer type of uh, experience that it can be offered when you have Wi-Fi and cellular in the same device. And you know, one very simple example which really resonates uh, with people is uh, the mobile worker. When, when you are going from uh, an outdoor uh, environment to an indoor or for in a place where you have a great, great coverage from cellular, and then you are walking into a into an airport where the coverage is not so good, and you really need, and you are taking up that call, you're making a presentation, you really need that connection to be seamless. And with tighter integration, you can actually drive those uh, those connection times, those latencies very down, so that there will be a seamless roaming between Wi-Fi and cellular, so that the user won't really notice. And today, uh, you know, some of it is realized through Passpoint but we still have a ways to go. And that's really where I think at 5G and, and Wi-Fi can really work together to make sure that um, in a way, a Wi-Fi could actually be treated as a, a 5G red, if you think about it, to, in the level of integration. And that will offer really uh, new opportunities for much richer user experiences, not only when you're talking, but you may be watching a movie, watching a video, going between Wi-Fi and cellular, uh, that should be completely seamless uh, uh, for the user. And there's also an advantage there for the operator for the enterprise because they can manage their networks in a different way. Uh, in, in this respect, how what is it different with, with 5G with respect to 4G? Because we've been trying to do to get a closer integration with Wi-Fi, and a lot of progress has been made with you know Passport as as you mentioned, but we're, we're still not there yet. So, what is the the, the, the additional ingredient of 5G will bring into that? Right. So 5G uh, brings this uh, component of uh, edge compute, which is something that, um, you know, it's one of the technologies, there are others such as, you know, the slicing and so on, we can touch on those, uh, that really basically brings the network closer to the enterprise. That will uh, essentially allow a much finer um, uh, control of the enterprises. Right? Enterprises are very sensitive in being able to uh, have very predictable service and being able to manage their own devices. For, uh, with 5G, 5G basically allows that. It basically brings the network closer to the, to the enterprise, allows enterprises to, uh, to be able to have dedicated quality um, in, in their networks. And by using the Wi-Fi that is uh, within, the, within the enterprise network and, the, and these edge services provided by, by the operators or deployed you know, by the enterprises themselves, it really uh, allows this integration between the Wi-Fi air interface and the 5G core. This is something that uh, today we don't have available, but that we really see that 5G is making uh, this possible, where you can, in a way, mix and match. You can allow operators to, uh, or enterprises to use elements of that 5G core if they want to, so that they can manage their devices in the enterprise or even when you have a mobile worker that is outside the enterprise, but at the same time leverage the huge install base of Wi-Fi. And you know, that's install base of Wi-Fi is gonna remain, is being there for a long time and it's gonna remain to the future. And being able to marry the elements of the 5G core with the existing install base and the future install base of Wi-Fi, it's something that 5G really offers as a differentiator, which was something that was not really possible uh, until now. Now, you mentioned the enterprise, and clearly Wi-Fi is heavily used in, in the enterprise. And when you think about edge computing, Wi-Fi has been doing edge computing since day one. So it's nothing new to, to Wi-Fi comes, it's basically native, you cannot do otherwise. So that, that's quite exciting. And so how do you see the evolution of Wi-Fi to meet the requirements uh, of the enterprise, not just in terms of you know, the sort of basic connectivity, but also for IoT applications? This is a great question. Uh, enterprises are evolving. I mean, sometimes we think of enterprises as, uh, uh, you know, gorillas 
but you know they have they have thriving new requirements and new needs that uh, you know keep keep evolving over time. Uh, some of the things that we see in the enterprise is uh, the, the sheer number of Wi-Fi devices now. That before it used to be only your laptops. Today are your laptops, your phones. They are uh, the uh, the projectors um, and many other devices to control. Uh, you know, AVCs and, uh, and and temperatures, all sort of devices that are show, showing up now in the enterprise. That essentially brings this uh, uh, introduce this requirement that you really need to be able to support high density, a huge number of devices in the enterprise, and 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 some of them with very different uh, uh, key, uh, quality of service requirements. Some that need uh, high speed, some of them that need low latency, and some of them that really you know, they don't transmit much data at all, but they want to make sure that whenever the device wakes up to transmit data, like a sensor, it can, it can access the channel and transmit data. This, uh, this just uh, uh, different set of requirements, it, that's really what we are trying to address with 11AX um, and with uh, 11AY, where 11AX can really address the high density uh, scheduled uh, type of service and it's really going to be a major evolution for uh, enterprises and also going to be dealing with IoT because one of the great things of 11AX is that it uses one technology uh, called OFDMA, which allows you to allocate uh, resources to different devices that are fine granular and therefore very conducive to uh, low power consumption. So it really addresses the high end as well as the low end devices. Yeah, and, and, and I guess it allows you to, to manage traffic in a more granular way so that you can address the needs, the, as I said, the, the more diverse needs of the, of the enterprise. And now let's go back to another topic that you raised, which is security, which is also very, it's absolutely crucial for the enterprise. Uh, we all need a secure connection, of course, but the, in an enterprise environment, it's even more important. Um, can you let's talk a little bit more about the, the, the new um, initiative, the new program, the WPA3 um, at, uh, for, for Wi-Fi? Why, why, do we need, why do we need more security? Or what is, that we, what is new there? Uh, you know, security is never enough. Um, and uh, Wi-Fi has had a very successful track record with security over the years with WPA2. Uh, that's the current uh, generation of security. And just recently, we have announced uh, in the Wi-Fi Alliance that we're going to be launching uh, WPA3, which is the new generation of security. And WPA3 really brings a new uh, uh, security mechanism that's going to make uh, Wi-Fi uh, secu you know, even safer and uh, even more secure to use. And some of the things that we are doing there, uh, we are introducing one new technology called uh, SAE. It stands for Simultaneous Authentication of Equals. And basically what this SAE technology does is that it makes uh, uh, much harder to, uh, for what we call dictionary attacks, which are attacks when when an attacker attempts to uh, to a guess or make several attempts to identify a password of, of users. So SAE is gonna make that type of attack uh, uh, almost uh, negligible. And then uh, the other thing that we are doing with WP3 is introducing uh, a, a stronger form of encryption, uh, which is, uh, which we say that's 192 bits encryption, which is a government grade type of encryption, something that you know, can be used even in, in, by government agencies. And together, this stronger encryption with this new uh, uh, technique called the SA, this new technology that would allow dictionary attacks essentially to be, um, to be uh, not possible anymore, is gonna make uh, WP3 a key technology. Um, as Intel, as in the industry, this is something that we believe that WP3 will be there together with 11AX. So that when you get the newest technology for 11AX, you're also gonna have the, uh, the strongest security. Yeah, that and that's that. I think it's uh, it's very important uh, to uh, to make sure that you, you provide the security that that we need. Um, now, this has been a great conversation. We covered a lot of topics, so let's try to, to sort of put it all together. And when we look at sort of the evolution of Wi-Fi, five G, uh, what what do, what do you see moving forward? I mean, uh, as you say, Wi-Fi is going to stay there. Uh, our, how is the mutual relationship, the relationship between the two going, going to evolve? 
um, you know, one of the one of the benefits and one of the key things that I think uh, it's great uh, to work at Intel is that they also work side by side with our 3GPP team. Um, and I'm on the you know, I put my Wi-Fi hat, and when I talk to them, um, you know, we we actually have a number of projects where we are trying to bring uh, elements of 5G and uh, and cellular uh, more broadly and Wi-Fi together. I, I think that these two technologies, uh, they're essentially going to go hand in hand into the future. They're going to be uh, tailored to different usages, to different requirements. And whenever the industry needs to bring those two together to the benefit of the user, that's something we will do. Um, I, I, I see a, a great future for Wi-Fi in the 5G world. And I'm sure that whenever cellular is going to move on beyond 5G, we're going to be there, uh, you know, head to head, trying to offer compelling new uh, use cases, compelling new experiences, and making sure that the industry is always moving forward. And so all I, all I can say here at the end is uh, long live Wi-Fi, long live cellular, because these technologies are here to stay. Absolutely. And yeah, without each other, they would not go very far. So we, we, we need both for, for different uh, use cases. Well, Carlos, so much uh, for taking the time to talk to us today. It was a great talking to you. Monica, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, it has been a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you all for listening in.